expressions in general, it's good to go for the emotion you're looking for. And whether you need to find reference of that, shoot reference of it, or find examples on Pinterest or online that help you out with your hunch on what you want it to look like. Like what is happening here that I can analyze and like utilize in my shot, right? I've just got columns of keys. Again, I'm blocking the face, right? I'm going through and I'm just blocking my expressions and I'm blocking the main beats and the audio. So I'm only looking at what I think is important to grab initially. So it's the same as the body poses and they may, they may or may not correspond with the body poses in some cases, but initially when I'm doing a real shot and I'm blocking lip sync with expressions and body acting, I'm going to match the face and the mouth shapes with my pose changes. So here's the audio. I gotta watch you. I gotta watch you. I gotta watch you. And so as you can see, again, this was a demonstration. There's no body stuff really in here. And so I amp it up as I go along and it does evolve. And here's a good moment right here where I knew I wanted to, if nothing else in this shot, wanted some moment here where the head's gonna go down and the mouth and the, and the, uh, the brows open up. So the whole face opens up and then catches up. So here the face kind of stretches and then squashes back together. Cause I wanted that kind of like, hmm, like almost, almost like a parent talking to a child, but also maybe like, you know, slightly sarcastic, but also suspicious. So somewhere in that ambiguous state where I was like, I, I gotta watch you, but very Randy Quaid. I think it's important to to think about the simplest read that has a lot of appeal as much as possible, right? And so going for shapes that allow for stretch and squash in the face where you can integrate the cheeks, the brows, eye darts when possible, good blinks, you know? Um, and then again, just going for shapes that feel three-dimensional. And I oftentimes will try to create shapes in the mouth that mimic 2D animation right? Just really nice, simple shapes in the mouth that kind of curl around on the far side. I might take the head here and play with how the rim of the cheek is going down into the mouth shape and find that sweet spot. Or maybe I just want the mouth or maybe I don't. Maybe I want a little bit of that far side. And in this case here, I think I'd probably want to get some of that, that far cheek over there and not just push the mouth into full, you know, um, silhouette. And then again, Opening the face away, this is kind of a common thing as well, where when a character is looking in a direction, a lot of times you'll want to push the brows in the direction where they're, uh, they're looking. So if he's looking to the left here, screen left to his right, I'll typically choose an expression where I can open the face up on the brows out and the mouth out. So I might pull the, the, the jaw in a little bit here. Here, going just for a nice, simplified shape. So again, like this is a nice example to me of just trying to go for a simple bottom shape here and a good sneer that pushes up into a nice, nice mouth corner up into this, um, this fold up by the nose and bringing the brows down and then having the eyelids kind of rest through here. Um, and then just, again, just pushing expressions. This is an example here where I did not push lower brow inside and upper brow outside. And so I think there's, there's definitely obviously times when you can break those rules, you know, um, and I just like this pose expression. And then just, again, pushing the, the mouth almost to a, a caricature state, you know. Um, one thing that's good to talk about too is simplification of the lower lids. A lot of people will create almond eyes, and I think it's a lot of time it's good to try to keep the, the feeling of a three-dimensional lid around an eyeball. And so, you know, obviously a foreshortened shape. And so a lot of times I'll try to go for a pretty straight bottom and then I can go for a curved top around it, you know, and all my shapes are probably pretty much that way. I really think that the workflow is only part of it. Again, these are all tools that at your disposal to move things, right? And it's the same as anything else, whether it's the body or the face, lip sync, whatever. You have to continue to observe and be a student again of, of what it means to make something appealing. Like, what does appeal mean? You know, what what things go into an appealing face, you know, making their own expressions based on the emotion of the scene and what the shot was about, the intent of the character, and the emotional content of the moment. I think it's perfectly acceptable to have a pose library of common shapes as a starting point. And then from there, going through and finding the areas where you want to plus things, you want to caricature things more, pushing emotions, things like that, you know.